I'm going to show you how to automatically scroll to a relative position in your native script apps. And we're starting right now. Ladies and gentlemen, what is going on? This is Alex from nativescripting.com, where I have an entire video course on using NativeScript UI widgets. You can see more info down below in the description. And if you want to learn more about NativeScript, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the little bell so you never miss a thing. Today, we're scrolling without using our hands. That's right, let's see how to programmatically scroll. This works equally well on NativeScript Core, Angular and view because we're using the scroll view element and the scroll view is so useful it comes with all flavors of native script and in this video I'll show you how to scroll to the end how to scroll to the middle and how to scroll to the beginning if you have a long horizontal scroll view you can also do it for vertical scroll views but that's not all oh no I will show you how to scroll to an ID so if we have an element with a specific ID I'll show you how to scroll to it programmatically let's do this all right let's create a new application by using the tns create command that's part of native script cli i'm gonna call this one demo scroll to position and i'll give it the tsc flag so it's a typescript project all right once we have this created let's navigate to that project i'm gonna go into that directory and open this up in visual studio code let's do a little bit of a setup first i have my main page xml here i'm gonna pop that open we're gonna need app.css Let's take up all the styles out of here and I'm gonna clean this main page XML up also. I don't want any of this commentary here. We don't need that. And I'll remove the stack layout as well. So I'll just leave the action bar and the navigating to event on the page. That's good enough. Okay, now let's go to the code behind here. I'm gonna remove the comments here as well. Boy, there are a lot of comments here, aren't there? I should make my own template. Okay, so here we go. We're navigating to and we got the page. We don't need the binding context because we're not actually gonna be doing anything with that. We've got the page and we're good to go. Now, sometimes when you need to use the page outside of the navigating to event, I like to have it out here just so I can refer back to it again. So this is a page of type page and I'm gonna set it to null up here. And then when we navigate to this page, then I'll set that page right there to this. So let's set up our markup here. I'm gonna start with a grid layout just to contain all my markup for the page. And inside I'm gonna have a scroll view, which is what we're gonna be scrolling. Now I wanna get a hold of my scroll view programmatically. So I need to give it an ID here. I'm gonna call it my scroller. And I'm also gonna be scrolling horizontally. So I need to set the orientation. Orientation property is gonna be horizontal. And just so that I have some content placeholder here, uh, for my labels that I'm gonna be scrolling. I'm gonna place a stack layout here. Let's close it out. And I'm also gonna give the stack layout an ID so that I can reference it in code and so I can fill it up with my labels. I'm gonna call this one content container. And let's give it a horizontal orientation as well. I'm just gonna copy this. Now you could probably just add your labels right to the scroll view here, but I wanna be explicit about my inner layout. So I added a stack layout here. All right, so let's grab a hold of the scroller and the content container in our code behind. So I'm gonna go back here. I'm also gonna need a scroll layout variable here, and it's gonna be of type scroll view, which I'm gonna initialize to null. Same thing with the content container. I named it scroll layout because I wanna be explicit about the fact that's a scroll view. A scroll view has some functions on it that we're gonna be using that are explicitly only scroll view related. Whereas a content container could really be anything. In our case, it's a stack layout, which I'm gonna instantiate to null. So we need to do a few imports here. Let's import the scroll view. Just gonna copy this right here. And that's coming from TNS core modules, UI, scroll view. And notice I'm using all long import statements here as of version 5.2 native script deprecated the short imports so now we have to use long imports which is good actually i have a video i made about that and you can see the link here tns core modules and this is coming from ui layouts stack layout great so now we got our imports let's go down here we can use the page now to get view by id and the first thing we're going to get is our scroll layout and 
I think the ID is called actually, ah, my scroller, there we go. And I wanna cast that as a scroll view. I also wanna get the content container here, page get view by ID, and that's gonna be as stack layout. So what's the idea of our content container? It's content container. So why am I getting this stuff in code? Well, I wanna create my labels programmatically so I can control how many labels I'm gonna have. So let's say const num labels, and I'll set that to 50. So I'm gonna generate 50 labels here. Now, these labels are just labels here, but you can think of these as any kind of layout or any kind of UI widget. Maybe you have an API that you pull down some data, maybe videos or music. That's why I'm adding these programmatically so you can see that even while adding them programmatically, it'll still work the same way. Your scrolling will still function. So here, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna loop through um, and I'm gonna do it num labels number of times. So in my case, it's 50. And I'm gonna create the labels programmatically. So const LBL equals new label, oops, label, and we need to import label. So I'm gonna import that up here. Import label that's coming from TNS core modules UI label. We got the label. Let's uh, give it a class name, LBL class name. So we're gonna give it some styling so it doesn't look very plain and boring. And this is gonna be my LBL. And we need to give it a text. We need to give it some text so we can see some something inside the label. So the text is gonna be, let's give it the actual number. That's the index of this loop, i.toString. Okay, once we have our label created, we need to add it to the content container. So content container, add view, or add child, I should say, and that's gonna be the label. Cool, so uh, what do we need to do here? Well, we need to run this, so let's take a look. I'm gonna save everything, and let's run this. TNS run iOS. I'll show you this in Android as well. This is gonna run through and build this project. I'm gonna fast forward through this part. Okay, and we've started out, and there is our app. Well, you can see that it's pretty ugly, but we can still scroll through these numbers. I want each label, though, to look unique and individual, so let's add some styling here. I'm gonna go ahead and paste some in because I don't want to bore you with my styling abilities here. I'm gonna paste in these styles. So the grid layout is gonna have some padding. Here's the label. It's gonna have a width and a height and a border color and a color, background color, border width, border radius, and large font here. All right, we'll come back to buttons and why we have that here in a second. And let's take a look at this now. All right, so here are labels and we can scroll through them. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? All right, so you can imagine that maybe you're scrolling movies here or music or something else or news stories. Here it is running on Android alongside of that. Now on Android, the label text is actually vertically centered to the top. There's hacks you can go around doing that, but uh, we're not looking at that right now. So just imagine that these are in the middle. All right, so what do we need to do? We need to be able to scroll this automatically. So in order to do that, I wanna have some buttons here. So in my grid layout, I'm gonna create a flexbox layout here to contain my buttons. All right, so now that we have two children in this grid layout, we need to somehow space them out. So I'm gonna add the rows property here and the top row is gonna have our buttons. So that's just gonna be height of 60 and the bottom scroll view is gonna take up the rest of the height. Flexbox layout is gonna have our buttons in it. So for example, here is the first button and I'm gonna give it a text Let's say we wanna scroll to end. So I'm gonna call this one end. And when we tap this button, I want our scroll view to scroll to the end. So scroll to end. All right, let's see what this looks like. Oh, okay, I need to add the row property down here on our scroll view. So that's gonna be row one. There's our button end on iOS and on Android. Great, so now we need to actually have it scroll to the end. Let's go ahead and implement this function, scroll to end in our code behind. I'm gonna export function scroll to end, and this is how we scroll. So we use the scroll layout, which we already have a reference to, and we have a function on it called scroll to horizontal offset or scroll to vertical offset. Now, I've oriented my scroll view horizontally, so we're gonna use the horizontal offset here but you can also do the same thing vertically. 
So I'm going to use the horizontal offset. And the first value is the value or where you want to go to. Now I want to go to the very end. And scroll view has this very handy property called scrollable width. So even though we are beyond the edge of the screen, you can still get the entire scrollable width of the scroll view using this property. And that's very handy. So I'm going to go to the scrollable width, and that's going to be the end. And the second parameter here is whether we want to animate it or not. Let's go ahead and animate it, sure. That way we can see the progression. So I'm going to save this and let's take a look. Our app restarts. I'm going to tap end and there it goes to 50. How about iOS? Yep, it animated to 50 and then I can scroll back on each one. And if I start out in the middle and go to end, it still goes to the end. Great. Let's add a couple more buttons here. Let's go to, I'm going to add one called start, scroll to start. Let's go to the middle, scroll to middle. And let's get an interesting one in here called scroll to position or scroll to ID. So I'm going to copy this and call this one ID. So the function is going to be scroll to ID. All right, let's implement these functions. Back in the code, I'm going to copy this one and say, scroll to start. So in order to go to the start, we use the same exact functions. But instead of scrollable width here, we're going to just use zero because zero is the start. Okay. How about middle? Well, I'm going to copy this scroll to end one and put it in the middle scroll to middle will be the name of the function. And we're going to use scrollable width divided by two, that's going to be the middle, pretty simple and self explanatory here. I'm going to just save all this and let's take a look. Great. So I'm going to tap end. that works. Middle, that takes us between 25 and 26. Very good. Start takes us back to one. So that works on iOS and on Android. Very cool. Now, how do we do this one scroll to ID? Well, let's get that function in there scroll to ID, we're still going to use the scroll layout, scroll to horizontal offset, but we need to calculate it. So we need to calculate the first parameter. And we need to calculate it based on uh, some other value in relation to another UI component here. And the way we're going to do that is by first assigning IDs to all our labels. So I'm going to look at the first label. And I'm going to look at the label we want to scroll to, and I'm going to get the relative distance between them. In order to get the hold of the label, I need to give it an ID. So in our for loop, when we're creating the labels, I'm going to give each label the ID of LBL, plus whatever the index is. So down here in scroll to ID, first, I need to get a hold of where I'm going to, which is the target. Let's say I want to go to label 40. So page dot get view by ID, and I'm going to give it the ID that I want to go to, which is LBL 40. Let's cast that as a view. It doesn't matter what it is. I mean, it is a label. So we can cast it as a label too. But in case it wasn't a label, you can use any UI element here. You can also cast this as a view to be more generic. Alright, so that's our target. Now we need the base, the base is going to be the first label in the list. Let's call this base. And that's going to be ID of LBL one. So we want to look at the target, and then get its location relative to another UI element, which is the base in this case. So this will give us a location, which in native script is a point. So if I hover my mouse over that, you'll see that we get a point back. But since we're dealing with horizontal scrolling and horizontal offset, we want to get the x coordinate here. If you were doing vertical scrolling, you would use the y coordinate here. And I want to animate it. So that's true. Let's take a look. The app restarts. If I tap on ID here, we go to 40. What if I wanted to go to label 45? I'm going to change that ID to 45. The app will restart, tap on ID, and this scrolls to 45. Very nice. And of course, all the other buttons still work just fine in both iOS and Android. There you go, folks. That was pretty awesome. In the next video, we're taking the scroll view even further by looping the items and simulating a circular list. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss it. Do you use the scroll view? Let me know down in the comments below. You can follow me on Twitter. I'm at Digitalix. I'll be tweeting about all kinds of native script related stuff over there. And I will see you in the next tip trick or tutorial right here. Bye.